Uh, I think it's one thing we've become accustomed to in a sense. I mean, since the election campaign, we knew that Duterte was making, let's say, types of colorful statements or, or using strong language. Uh, so in a sense, uh, the, I would imagine most investors have already become accustomed to it. Um, you know, that said, when there's any change of administration, there's new policies, uh, not just economic policies, investors will take time to get used to them and see their impact. Um, so, you know, that, that could explain some of the outflows we've seen in the past month. Uh, but overall, we think the focus should be on the domestic economy, the actual economic policies. Joseph, when you upgraded um, your growth, the HSBC's growth forecast for the Philippines, one of the headwinds that was a concern was a slowdown in the current account. And you've also mentioned some concern when it comes to exports because of this crackdown on the mining industry. Can you tell us more about that? Um, sure. I mean, the, the decline in the exports is essentially part and parcel of the stronger growth story. So it's not something to worry about in and of itself. Um, exactly. We have capital imports surging to build the infrastructure, and the magnitude of that increase is largest in 2016, and, and it'll taper off somewhat as we go into the end of the, the term of the president, when infrastructure spending should reach 7% of GDP, according to what Budget Secretary Diokno has said. Uh, so essentially, it's, um, it's something to be expected as investment increases. It'll partly be offset by increased services exports, such as BPO, um, but also the fact that remittances growth, while um, still positive, it is slowing. The trend is slowing. We estimate 3.5% this year. So all of this, let's say, contributes to some of the longer-term picture for the current account. One thing that was you were optimistic about was the tax reform um, that the Philippines would undertake. But now as the DOF, as the Finance Department presents its tax reform package, is there anything there that concerns you? I still think we need to see some more details before we can clearly say what it'll do for revenues and, and what it'll do for expenditure. Uh, sorry, to, uh, for revenues based on the, certain, the, the various components. Um, from an investment perspective, foreign direct investment, the most important is, of course, um, is of course corporate taxes because that is a, a major impediment to the to investing in the Philippines. Um, I would say the income taxes aren't necessarily a short-term concern um, because there is a revenue base right now based on past fiscal fiscal prudence. Um, but it's important to raise the revenue, the tax revenue, over let's say the next five to ten years because that makes it more likely to actually increase the length of this infrastructure program and, and to allow the Philippines to continue investing greater sums for a longer period of time. But ultimately, we'll have to see more details um, before we can actually say. This week is packed with central bank meetings. You have the Bank of Japan, the Federal, um, the federal Bank, as well as the, the U.S. Federal Reserve, as well as the BSP tomorrow. Now, what do you see happening uh, with, a, with a Fed meeting? You know, a majority says that there's going to be no move, but there's a few who kind of stand by the possibility of a rate hike. Um, there, there is always a possibility. I mean, the Fed did sound a little bit more hawkish, let's say, in August around Jackson Hole. Uh, but then all the data from the U.S. economy actually has um, come in a bit weaker than expectations, I would say, in the past two, three weeks from jobs reports to ISM uh, manufacturing data. Um, so none of this suggests that the Fed should be in too much of a hurry uh, to raise rates. And ultimately, when we look at the very weak global growth, we think the Fed will remain on hold for some time, actually not, not increasing rates until 2017. Um, so, so that's going to set the backdrop for the BSP meeting. And in the first place, the BSP doesn't necessarily have to move on the back of the Fed. When you look at domestic conditions in the Philippines, they clearly suggest that economic policy, monetary policy, is sufficient for, for allowing growth to continue. Thank you very much, Joseph and Calcaterra. Always appreciate your insights.